Good morning, Rick. This is Lon Seidman with CT News Junkie. How are you? Good morning, Lon. I'm doing great. Great to see you back. And you looked really good getting off the helicopter in Kazakhstan. There was some raw video that NASA released on uh, NASA TV earlier this week. Were you surprised by how good you felt when go. you uh, got, got on the ground? I definitely was concerned. I was uh, concerned whether I had exercised enough on orbit to feel good after landing. And uh, surprisingly, I felt pretty good. Uh, the vestibular system was a little bit shaky. But uh, other than that, I felt pretty darn good. And do you think that's the result of the training and the experience you've had before? I mean, I know they're using osteoporosis drugs and some other things to, to try to help that transition. Do you think those made an impact as well? Well, I think, I think it's two things. Part of it is the fact that I've flown several times, and I think the body gets used to uh, that, that adjustment of uh, going into zero-G and coming back. But the other thing is just the exercise. I didn't take any drugs of any kind while I was up there to help me readapt, but it was just a lot of exercise, running, bicycling, and, and uh, lifting weights on the resistive devices. And a lot's happened uh, politically on the ground between the U.S. and Russia during your time on the station. You went up with the with the Nat, with the uh, Olympic torch, and uh, then the Ukraine I issues happened. Uh, did, did anything? that was happening on the ground impact the mission with you and your crewmates? No, not at all. You know, on a personal basis, uh, and both here on the ground and on space station, uh, we get along great with all the folks from Russia and all the various countries. Uh, we discussed it a little bit up there with uh, the cosmonauts, and of course they have a different perspective than we do, and, and just like uh, every folks do down here, but uh, no, it didn't affect our relationship in any way. And, and what are your thoughts on the future, given, given this? Well, I think it's important that uh, that we have cooperation between the countries in the sp in space in space travel because it's a very expensive. It's a very uh, a lot of different countries bring a lot of different experiences to the table. But I also think it's important that the United States not be dependent on other countries. So I think uh, you know even though cooperation is good, we still have to be somewhat independent. And related to that, I think next week uh, SpaceX is unveiling some flight-ready hardware of their. Uh, crew-capable Dragon, and, and which is, of course, the, uh, the, the human version of the cargo ship you helped mm -hmm. uh, birth to the station. Uh, what's the buzz among your colleagues about the new spacecraft? I haven't heard a lot about it yet, to tell you the truth. Uh, I, know that, uh, I know that SpaceX is move, working towards a manned vehicle. I, have, uh, I really don't know many details about it, but uh, I know that I'd be excited to see any company uh, start launching from the United States to, uh, up to the International Space Station. And I'm sure a lot of folks in your uh, hometown of Waterbury are wondering when that travel bug is coming home. Are you uh, planning to visit anytime soon? Oh, yeah, I'll be there probably sometime in the fall, still working out the plans. But uh, my guess is September, October time frame, I'll be up in the Connecticut area. Oh, good. We look forward to uh, seeing you there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're now one of the most seasoned spacewalkers of all time. I think your, your last spacewalk uh, put you in the top five of uh, all the long-duration spacewalkers. Mm -hmm. Did anything surprise you on this mission that you weren't expecting? Uh, you've been out, outdoors quite a bit in your career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, of course, the spacewalks themselves were surprises because uh, there were no scheduled spacewalks. These were all unplanned due to uh, uh, failures in the space station systems. So th that in itself was a surprise. But the spacewalks themselves, no, there was no surprises. Everything worked uh, very well. You know, the ground folks, uh, they prepared everything very well, the procedures for us, and told us what, exactly what tools we needed. Everything worked exactly as they planned. And what's the feeling like when you get out there? I mean, you've been out there a number of times. Is it Does it ever get any less awe-inspiring, or is it still something where you have to pinch yourself uh, as best you can through a spacesuit? <laughs> no, no, you know, it gets, uh, of course, every time you go out there and you do a spacewalk, uh, maybe there's a little less stress because you get a little more used to it. Uh, in fact, the last spacewalk we did was only about an hour and a half, and because we had so much, uh, I won't say free time, but we had so much time to complete the task, it was actually quite enjoyable. We could relax and take our time and perform the task, the one task that we had to do. So, uh, you know, no, it's a, it's a, it's it's a great honor and it sure is a lot of fun to go outside and do a spacewalk. And, and we talked uh, back in November, you, you were you know, getting ready for your mission and said you had no plans to uh, leave NASA at this point. Are you still uh, planning to stick around as uh, some of these deep space <laughs> missions begin? Yeah, my plan is to stick around. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it all works out, though. Great. Well, Rick, thank you very much for your time this morning, and, uh, and we look forward to seeing you in Connecticut in the fall. Thanks, Lon.